Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so we're at Fukuoka Airport, getting ready to fly back to Tokyo. It's the 25th, just in time for my cat's birthday. Today is my cat's birthday. And so looking forward to wishing Hana a happy birthday. Now, what watch am I wearing? Well, the Seiko 5, of course, because I'm really worried that the GMT is going to get magnetized and the bumpiness of the plane thought could like knock it out of uh, accuracy. So what I did is I, I, I actually sent it back uh, one day air. So uh, it'll, it'll meet me um, in Tokyo tomorrow. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've got it. I've got it. All right. Uh, yes. I think uh, Jimmy Split's right. You only live once. I should have taken it snorkeling. I should have taken it snorkeling. You know, Danny actually made a video, a uh, four minute video. I'll put a link in the description. I've only seen two minutes of it because we had to leave for the airport so I could only get two minutes in. But um, he was saying that uh, he felt the same when he was uh, uh, faced with uh, swimming in the ocean. He had just gotten his brand new Schmicko straight from the AD Mint Air King. And he was like, yeah, do I wear it? And his son convinced him, hey, this is why you bought it. So I really should have uh, worn this. I've seen the error of my ways. Um, but I was thinking about it and, uh, you know, I think, I think it really depends on, you know, what model you're talking uh, in, in regards to, you know, how prone you are to uh, be worried about using it. Um, take me for instance, okay? So the watch that I'm most comfortable using is the Explorer 2, all right? And it has seen the least growth price-wise. And that really means something because, you know, when I got my first GMT Master 2, prices were really high. And at the time, it was crazy. I paid seven grand for it. And now, seven grand for a GMT Master 2 is kind of, well, it would be a killer deal. Uh, so it's, it's tough to use a Rolex watch like a tool when you see these price rises, it screws with your head and you think, you know, this is, this is something special. I, sh I should take care of it. It's, it's almost like, um, you know, that way of thinking, being scared to take it in the ocean uh, is, is sort of a product of the current situation with these neo vintage GMTs, you know, Oh, uh, there's a Fukuoka watch shopping video to come. Look forward to it. I think it's going to be a good one. But I saw a Coke, no box, no papers. It was 1,280,000 yen. That's, uh, that's about, I want to say, uh, $12,000. Okay. Probably north of $12,000. And so that really screws with you. But strangely enough, if it was a watch that I could get, uh, a contemporary watch, like a 116000 Oyster Perpetual, I would have thought nothing about taking it in the water. I mean, you know, when you get an Oyster Perpetual for 550,000 yen, about north of five grand, 36 millimeter, uh, just, you know, a hundred meter water resistant, Oyster Perpetual, I wouldn't think twice about putting that in the water. I mean, it's, it's not collectible. The second you walk out of the AD with it, you've lost a grand. It's never going to really go up in price. And so I would feel completely different about, about that watch. Um, you know, Archie Luxury has given me some really good advice as far as uh, buying watches that retain their value. And not only retain their value, but go up in price. But it's a double-edged sword because 
when you get these pieces that are pretty good investments, to be honest, then it does affect uh, the usability, or at least your perception of the usability. I think it's the perception more than anything. Um, but, you know, if I had not taken Archie's advice and say, you know, uh, I don't think he's against an Oyster Perpetual, but I don't think he would think that maybe getting an Oyster Perpetual brand new from an AD would be such a great move. If I had done that, uh, I wouldn't have any of this watch angst. It totally would have gone in the water uh, because why? Why would, you, why would you worry about keeping that minty? Why would you worry about keeping that nice? You know, it's, it's not going up in price. It's not, it's not a, a really desirable model. And so really the, the watch angst I experienced, I think is a product of the pieces that I've chosen. It's kind of interesting. This seems like it's, 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 you know, it's going up as far as collectability goes. And you can't get them anymore, right? And, that, and, and knowing that sort of, you know, messes with your head. Whereas the Oyster Perpetual, those are probably only going down in price. You know, it retains some of its value, but you, you lose a thousand bucks the second you walk out of an AD. And I don't think it's ever going to rise above the 550,000 yen, the five grand that you would pay for it. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a great, really usable piece in that sense. Um, but really, this is more of a, a fun watch to, to wear. Uh, you know, yeah, that was just something I was thinking of. So uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it's a double-edged sword when you have sort of desirable Neo vintage pieces because, um, you know, it does, affect the uh your perception of the of the usability of the pieces uh in the face of these price rises all right so um and that could be another reason you might want to go with something like an omega right you don't have to worry about whether well, it's going to become collectible go up in price you just use it you just use it. you have fun with it um anyway just food for thought but uh yeah it should have it should have seen the damselfish it should have seen the damselfish anyway take care uh look forward to that uh that fukuoka watch shopping video i'll try to get that all edited and uh uploaded in the next couple days take care thanks for watching see you next time happy birthday hana